In this week's video, we will be doing a full review of the Celestron 100 AZ Refractor Telescope because I distinctly remember as a kid going to my neighbor's house and looking through his telescope and seeing the rings of Saturn for the first time. So a few weeks ago when I read that now is a great time to see Saturn, Jupiter, Venus, and much more, I thought it would be an excellent opportunity to share that experience I had when I was a kid with my kids. And also, you may not know that after next year, Saturn's rings will become in plane with our view from Earth, making them near impossible to see until the year 2027, according to Cambridge.com's website. So if you plan on covering space soon, or you already have a child who's interested in space, especially Saturn and the rings, you might not want to miss this opportunity. And for that reason, here on the Science Club, we will be doing our very first ever telescope review. So hopefully by the end of the video, you will know if this is the right purchase for your family, homeschool co-op, or general education educational setting. And I should say right off the bat, as much as I don't want you to click away at the beginning of this video, if you're looking for a great quality telescope that looks into deep space for under $100, unfortunately they don't exist. And while I am certainly not an expert on telescopes, I do know a lot about optics. Not counting the lens I have on this camera, this camera, I have this lens, this lens, these lenses. I may have more lenses than I do subscribers. One of the reasons that cheap but quality telescopes don't exist is you need large lenses that let in a lot of light. Any picture can be magnified hundreds of times, but if you don't let in a lot of light, you're just magnifying a blurry and grainy picture. That being said, like all of my reviews, I try to find a balance between quality, ease of use, applicability to homeschoolers, and price. And I think I found that in the Celestron 100AZ telescope, so let's get started. Let's start with the ease of use. I was basically just looking for a telescope that I could take out of the box and point to the sky with minimal setup. I won't go into much detail here because there are plenty and frankly much better videos on YouTube that talk about the different kinds of telescopes you can buy. But generally speaking, they come in two types, a refractor telescope and a reflector telescope. Reflector telescopes usually are bigger, let in a lot more light, typically have great image quality, but they are heavier, more expensive, and need to be collimated. And since there are tons of YouTube tutorials that talk about how to collimate your telescope easily, it probably means it's not easy and as a homeschooling parent, you don't have time to do it. A refractor telescope is the traditional setup you're thinking when you think about a traditional telescope. No collimation required. And in the case of the Celestron Inspire, it turns out my hopes were true. In the box, for all intents and purposes, was just the telescope tube and the stand. And just with a few twists of some anchoring screws, this telescope was put together. From opening the box to completing the entire assembly, was truly just a matter of a few minutes and no tools were required. But don't just take my word for it. There were a lot of Amazon reviews that say the exact same thing. And if anybody can screw up an idiot proof assembly, it's this guy. The telescope also comes with a finder scope that helps you easily locate objects in the sky, along with the red-hued flashlight that fits in the base of the tripod, designed to illuminate everything around you, but with the red hue not interrupting the night vision your eyes have become accustomed to during the dark evenings. It comes with what's called as an out-to-azimuth tripod mount, which basically means you can track your object through the night sky with some simple tilt and panning. The front lens cover also doubles as a smartphone adapter, so you can take videos and pictures with your smartphone, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later in the video. So overall, from an ease of use and setup standpoint, it was great. Next up on the review is the quality of the product. And if I'm being honest, I certainly don't have other telescopes to compare the image quality to. But I have been very pleased with both the build quality of the Celestron telescope and the image optics. The accompanying tripod feels very sturdy as well. It is made of steel and feels quite strong. In fact, it is much sturdier than the tripod I had for my main camera, which isn't saying too much because I have a pretty crappy tripod. Tripods can be very expensive, so it's really nice to know that the one that comes with it feels sturdy. The telescope barrel feels nice and strong, has a metallic feel, and I've been on their website to see exactly what what it's made of and I can't find it, but it's definitely not plastic. So that's a bonus as well. But overall, and most importantly, I'm very pleased with the optic quality as well. It has fully coated glass lenses, which provide a nearly four inch aperture. And again, the bigger the aperture, the more light that comes in. More light that comes in, the better the image. Like I was saying earlier, big lens, lots of light. Small lens, not as much light, nice image, crappy image. So it really makes a difference the size of the lens that comes on your telescope. And that's the main reason why. Now in just a few moments, I'm gonna show you some video that we took with our camera and cell phones using various adapters. But just a real quick disclaimer. When shooting video or pictures this way, you don't have the additional magnification of the various eyepieces that you can use. And you can't hook a DSLR or mirrorless camera directly to the eyepiece to utilize the magnification. So for example, 
I'm looking at a tree about 150 meters away, and as you can see, as I scroll through the focus, the tree comes in and out of sharpness, which shows you the level of detail the telescope can provide. So now just imagine using the high power magnification eyepiece and it will be even greater. And to show you the difference, this is video taken from my cell phone as I hold it just up to the eyepiece. And you can clearly see the difference in magnification. Now the level of detail on the iPhone video isn't great at all, but you get the idea of the magnification level. Here you can actually see a small insect climbing up the side of the tree again from nearly 150 meters away. The point to all of this, the image that you see when looking through the eyepiece combines the clear and crispness that you saw on my main camera with the magnification that you saw on the cell phone. The problem is the final crisp and magnified image is really hard to be able to show you on this review here. So unfortunately, you kind of have to take my word for it, but it's pretty simple. The crispness of the DSLR combined with the magnification of the cell phone, and that's what you get. It's actually a really nice image that you see when you're using your naked eye looking into the eyepiece. And I have been over the moon happy with the images that we've been able to obtain with the telescope. I said over the moon because we're doing a review on telescopes looking out into space and you can- Now you might be thinking, why am I just showing daytime video and not video at night? Well, that's for two reasons. Filming at night is incredibly challenging. Without light, you can't see anything. And with light, we attracted so many mosquitoes, moths, and other insects, it became quite distracting and not incredibly fun. And also using the camera and all the adapters to hook up to the telescope at night with no light, was challenging. But just know, using the telescope at night produced really clean, sharp, crisp images that we were all really happy with. We did ultimately get pictures of Saturn and its rings, Jupiter and moons going around it, and of course the moon and its craters. I'm just really hesitant to show them on the video because it really doesn't do it justice compared to what you see when you actually use your own eye to look through the telescope eyepiece. That's what it's all about, the personal experience, looking through it yourself, not just taking a video or a picture with your phone, even though that's probably all the kids these days want to do. And speaking of the eyepieces, the Celestron company provides many additional eyepieces that provide higher magnification along with moon filters and other color filters that you can purchase to further enhance the viewing experience. And I'm going to talk about those in a later video, but knowing this kit, you get two different eyepieces with different levels of magnification, which is a nice party bonus as well. Now let's talk about the price. The Celestron telescope is not the most expensive product we've reviewed on the channel. That honor goes to the Epson EcoTank printer we did last year, which by the way, we still have not replaced any of the cartridges. That's it's incredible. But it turns out telescopes are a lot like cars. They make really cheap ones and they make really expensive ones. They all get you from point A to point B, but the experience driving in a Ford Focus is not going to be as good as the experience driving in a Tesla Model X. I assume that's the case. I've never actually ridden in a Tesla before. But everyone says they're incredibly. The last thing I want to mention before I say how much this telescope cost is, if you hear the price and you're thinking to yourself, it's totally worth it and I was expecting to have to spend a little bit more, in addition to the link for this telescope below, I will link other telescopes of increasing price range and decreasing price range after doing some research so hopefully you can find the sweet spot that fits you perfectly. This telescope, the Celestron Inspire 100AZ, and the 100 stands for the 100 millimeter aperture right now on Amazon costs right at $350. So what I suspect that means for the average family that just wants to look into space one time and call it a day, this purchase is probably not justifiable. However, this is a great purchase if you have multiple kids that are all young and you know that earth science and astronomy and space education is definitely going to not be an insignificant part of your education. And obviously if you're part of a homeschooling group or co-op or know that you're going to use it over the next several years on a regular basis, in that setting is more justifiable as well. Our last topic is going to be applicability to homeschoolers. I know it goes without saying that studying astronomy, outer space, and planets is usually a large part of the homeschooling curriculum at various grade schooling levels. And there are many ways to do it. You can use online tools, websites, books, even field trips to your local planetarium. But a good telescope can clearly play an integral part of that education. Using a telescope for the education of astronomy is not as critical as having a calculator for math, but it's definitely gonna enhance the educational experience. So why make this video now? As I said at the very beginning, there are quite a few planets that you can see not only with the telescope but with your naked eye in the night sky right now. Currently, I'm filming this video in the beginning of May 2022. And to see these planets, you have to get up in the pre-dawn hours and see them as they come up over the horizon before the sun comes up. The good news is, every day they come up earlier and earlier in the morning, and come August and September of this year, you'll be able to see them in the night sky in the early evening. So it'll be much easier to go out with your kids and enjoy it. August 14th is the date to remember because that is going to be Saturn's opposition. Not getting too much into the details, but that's when Earth is positioned between the Sun and Saturn and the view of Saturn is going to be the best on that day as it will look the biggest and the brightest. So if you get your telescope now or within the next few weeks you'll have plenty of time to become accustomed with the controls and practice
practice with it. So come August 14th, you can have a lot of fun looking up at the brightest picture of Saturn you'll be able to see for the entire year. So that concludes our review of the so it was 5.30 in the morning when I was filming that video. So now it's a few days later and I'm doing the edit of the video. I realized there's a couple of things that I forgot to mention in the video. So I'm gonna talk about them now and then we'll go back to the normal ending. The first thing I forgot to say is this telescope is incredibly portable. As easy as it was to put together with no tools, it's just as easy to disassemble with no tools and store in a car and take it camping somewhere or anywhere you can enjoy the night sky. The other thing I forgot to mention is this telescope can also be used for terrestrial observation. And I didn't think much of it, but as I was making the B-roll for this video, you can clearly hear that a couple of hawks were being aggravated by neighboring crows in our neighborhood. One of the hawks perched on top of the trees that I'm pointing to here, and I'm going to show you what the video looked like on the DSLR while it was attached to the telescope. Keep in mind, these images from the camera and my phone pictures do not come close to giving the image quality when you look through the telescope justice. I just bring it up as viewing terrestrial objects and animals as another opportunity to use the telescope if you were to decide to purchase it. Okay, so now we're going back to the regularly scheduled ending to the video. So that concludes our review of the Celestron 100AZ telescope. I'll do one or two follow-up videos throughout the year as we purchase additional eyepieces and also talk about how you can attach a mirrorless camera to the telescope. Next week's video is going to be all about photosynthesis and how to actually see oxygen made from the leaves of plants. I'm excited to see how that one's going to turn out as I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. So until then, have a great day everybody and we'll see you next week.